So you guys might not be real estate agents, brokers, things like that, but as buyers, as investors, we still need to understand a few things when it comes to seller concessions, escalations, and appraisal guarantees. And these are, these are probably the hardest concepts to understand in the real estate negotiation world. So I'm going to try and give you a couple examples and, and kind of get through it with you. So let's say we started with, just, we're going to use easy numbers here, $200,000 offer. Let's say we didn't have a guarantee. It was just a normal offer, two hundred thousand dollar offer. Um, appraisal came in at two hundred thousand. That means there's no difference. A lender is only going to lend based on the appraised value. Mind you, if you have a ten percent down payment, they don't actually lend you the two hundred. They'll lend you one eighty, presuming you bring the two hundred. So they'll only lend up to X minus the down payment required, effectively. So um, let's say it was ten percent again, twenty grand. So, um, and in this case, there's no cash needed to make up a low appraisal and the guarantee based cash required is zero. So nothing happened here. Uh, and just for, for notes, closing costs for loans vary from two to 5% on, and do not include your down payment requirement, presuming 20% down payment based on the appraisal appraised value and 3% closing costs. You would owe this in cash. So I have this using 0.2, uh, no, I'm sorry, 3%. Uh, plus the 20% down payment. So that's what this is using, which is, which ends up being, you know, almost 25%, you know, 25% would be 50 grand, including the cash needed um, based on the guarantee being needed. Um, it's this, so still 23%. So I want you to pay attention to what happens in the negotiation versus the end result of cash needed. So right now everything came in fine. Let's say it came in at $215,000. Take your guess now, what's it gonna do? Pretty much nothing. Um, and in fact, this is still fine actually. Um, there's no additional cash needed, there's no nothing. Now let's say, um, let's say in this offer, you did give a guarantee of $10,000, okay? What happens? Nothing, because you made a great offer um, and the value of the property came in at or above. So whenever the value comes in at or above, there's no need to panic, even if you did do a guarantee. Um, now here's here's strategy. If you did offer on a property that you're confident would come in at or above, or highly likely of coming in at or above and you wanted to make it stronger, you could add a guarantee. And guess what? It doesn't have to be a big guarantee. You could even add 5,000 which sometimes really isn't much. If you have the cash position to justify it, great. But look what happens, nothing. You did not have to use any additional cash for this. And just to make it easier, I'm sorry, I gotta update this. Um, you still didn't have to bring in any new money, whether this is 5,000 or zero, no new money was required. Now we're gonna look at the tough stuff. What if it did come in 10,000 light? Let's, let's say we use a $10,000 guarantee came in at 200,000, but now it's coming in at 190,000. So the difference is 10,000, right? Came in under 10,000. So now this also lowered, on one hand, this lowered what the lender expected for their down payment, but it, it also, if you don't renegotiate, it also increased the expectation to cover that, right? So your cash needed to make up the low appraisal is 10 grand, because that was the difference. If you guaranteed that 10 grand, then you still owe 10 grand of it. Um, based on the closing costs and everything, the lowered value plus the guarantee, you went up to forty three thousand. I'm sorry, fifty three thousand because the forty three thousand is based on the one ninety at three percent, and then the extra ten k is the twenty seven percent. So if you remove that, so it went up what four three percent? I believe it was four percent. Yeah, okay, five percent. Sorry, five percent increase in cash needed to close the deal because of the ten k guarantee. Now. What if the appraisal only came in at five grand less? So 195, right? What happens? Or is a 5K difference? Lender again comes in at the 195. How much did you need of your guarantee? You only needed 5,000 to make up that difference. So you only needed half of what you're willing to guarantee. Now that did increase your total costs by five grand to close, but in the grand scheme, it's not a, it's not a major difference. It's 3% higher and you still captured the property above and beyond somebody else. So. Now, from a cash on cash perspective, it probably doesn't really severely damage um, what your position was. But if this added little function increases your traction in a multi-offer situation, they don't have they don't have offers on the table 
I think don't even worry about a guarantee. But when there are multi offers, it's good to offer an appraisal guarantee. So let's try one more. Let's say, let's say the appraisal came in drastically low. Let's say it came in at one hundred eighty thousand. Boom. So there's a twenty grand difference. Cash needed to make up the low appraisal. It's still twenty grand, but you only guaranteed ten. So as long as you can renegotiate with the seller at one eighty. Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. At this point, at this point, you would have guaranteed the 10 over the 180. So they they want 190 in total. So the, the seller is going to get 190. They're going to get 180 between the loan and the down payment expected from the lender and then the additional 10 grand, which puts you at 26%. So in the situation where you think the appraisal could come in low, it actually is to your benefit in some ways because you're not really overexpanding. And again, if you only lowered it to five grand, I mean, this could be that little that little bump could still greatly impact things. If you know, it, I think the original number was twenty two percent over here, so it only goes up one percent versus what we thought it would be. If you know the appraisal is going to come in low, put in the guarantee. You're actually in a better spot. Yeah, if it comes in over, and again, if you have a small guarantee, that's that's the big thing I want to really harp on here. Um, but hopefully, this is kind of explaining what that does with the cash percentage toward the deal. Um, and how you can approach this. And a couple other things I want to show you guys. Let's go over here. I think it's so things to know. Um, cash heavy can offer guarantee. If you if you are cash heavy or you have an, a little bit of extra cash, you can try to offer an appraisal guarantee. Appraisal value is likely to meet or exceed uh, multiple offer situations. This is what, exactly what I was recommending. Um, and these are kind of like the verbiages that you would put in. The appraisal guarantee offering X over the contract pri offer price in the event the appraisal comes in lower than the offer price. Seller concessions. Money on here. Sorry, definitions, not verbiages. These are examples. Um, money allotted for closing costs that is funded by the mortgage up to the appraised value and the funds used cannot exceed the total. The closing costs, typically 10K is a high amount. Only negative is to seller may be the appraised value and not are inhibited. So let's say, you know, I think in most loans, you can you can ask for up to 3% of the purchase price as seller concessions, but some people get all confused with percentages. So sometimes I'll just pick a flat number that's easy to understand. So let's say you had offered um, $500,000 and you want to, and you have a 10% down payment. So let's call it 50 grand. But you want 10% in concessions just in case you know your closing costs and your mortgages are going to be like 15, 20 grand. So that, that 10K will reduce the amount you have to bring in, but it's lent to you, really. You are financing that. So it's not really from the seller, it's the seller allowing it. And it depends on how you set it up. Because let's say, let's say you did 10K concessions on a five hundred thousand dollar buy. That means the seller is only gonna net four hundred and ninety if you agreed to that. But the seller might be like, no, 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 I'm trying to net 500 period. So then you'd actually have to put it above that. You'd have to go, I'm going to give you 510,000 with a 10 K concession. That means the seller will get 500. You'll put that as long as that appraisal comes in at 510, then you'll be able to still pull out that 10 K concession. So that's kind of how that works. And lastly, the escalation clause, um, you still can see these, uh, but most people just say, Hey, just give me your highest number period. We don't want to play tit for tat. Cause if you have six properties, six offers, I'm sorry, for a property, and they all have the same escalation clause. You wanna know what wins? Whoever had the highest top end escalation. That's really how, how it's more times than not gonna work out. So a buyer agrees to increase the offer price by X in the event another valid offer is presented. So technically, um, each offer is an individual's property. So you're not supposed to share the proofing of the other offer without like, you know, blacking it out. So. There's that, but um, more times than not, they are willing to share something to kind of validate that it was a, there was a real viable offer. But how can you ever really know? How do you know that the other agent didn't make it up? It's hard to say. I'm not saying it's all like that, but my point is there's the reality and then there's what is presented and you know how you perceive it. So um, all that being said, hopefully this kind of helps. I'm going to put this in the documents for you guys too. And uh Hope that helped you understand seller concessions, escalations, and appraisal guarantees.